here, Scott. 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 Somebody's pointing. Love you. That's not on. This is not on. How about that one? Is that one on? I'm not going to say all that all over again. Good morning. Glad to have you with us. And if you're with us for the for first time, we're glad to have you with us as well. If you've been with us regularly, you know that every week we say that God has something, something amazing. Come on, Jerry. Jerry, the word is amazing. God has something amazing that he wants to do in your life this morning. I really do believe that. If you have had something amazing that has happened to you this week, I want you to stand up. About five of you, God did something amazing. Great. Okay. Okay, you can sit down. We have been praying for our teens for weeks, for months, for NYC. And I, I want to share with you something that amazing that God is doing this week. So Miriam Griffin became a Christian through the ministry of this church. She started do dating Nolan. And she came here and her family, brought, or Nolan's family, brought her here. Miriam um, came to know Christ. She's been baptized here. She's decided to go to Olivet. She's enrolled and in a couple weeks. will be going to Olivet full time for children's ministry. She is at NYC this week. And there's a picture of Miriam. That's Miriam on there, on stage, in front of thousands of NYC teens. They're professing her faith in Christ. God is doing amazing things, is he not? Listen to that testimony that Miriam has. God has something amazing that he wants to do in your life as well. You have a connection card that's there in your worship folder. If you want to fill out some details, if you want to share an amazing God story in there, write that down. If you have a prayer request, whatever information that you'd like to share in there, whatever you're comfortable with, write that in there, tear that off, and you can drop it in one of the boxes or give it to an usher, or give it to myself or, or Pastor Allen or Jan or any of our staff. And we want to be able to, to share those prayer requests and pray with you and celebrate those amazing things that God wants to do. I have also a couple other announcements. We need backpacks for Eastside Mission. They have to be clear. That clear is in clear plastic. So... That's a, a new mandate that the school has. If you want to donate some clear um, backpacks for the students this fall, or you can also donate the money, and we can help find those clear backpacks, maybe find a, a good deal on them. You're welcome to do that as well. Um, you can do that through our regular giving. And then kind of some next step things. The, the, the progression in the amazing things that God is doing. If you'd like to be baptized, or if you have no idea what baptism is really all about, and you want to know, talk to Pastor Jan. Um, and, or you can put that on your connection card as well, and, and she or someone could get in, in contact with you for that. And then also membership class is going to be coming up um, for those. Once again, if you want to know what membership all is all about, you don't have to sign the dotted line just yet. I venture to say by the time you're done with our membership class, though, you'll want to sign on the dotted line, and you'll want to be a part of this formally, um, but you can... Met um, put that on your connection card as well. Details are also in your bulletin. Or you can talk to Pastor Jan about that as well. And then the last is this, forgiving. Um, thank you. There's a lot of uh, big things going on in this church. There's things in the facility, but there are students at NYC, which cost a lot of money. There's missional work that takes place. There are, there are missions that are going to be commissioned on our behalf uh, over the winter. There's, there's just so much ministry going on. And that would not happen without you. That would not happen without you responding the way that God weighs on your heart. If you want to give because you feel obligated to, I would challenge you to go ahead and keep that money. If you want to give because God is just prompting and moving in your heart and you want to give, God wants us to give from the heart. And, and if you want to do so, there's numerous ways. They're all up there. and You'll find a way to give. But thank you for giving. And I just ask that, that as we continue in this ministry, we continue to give, that we find the joy in it. That it no longer, my, my, I remember we've been hearing saying, give until it hurts. How about if we give until it doesn't hurt anymore? That's when it gets really fun. So thank you. So let's pray and ask God's blessing, not only on what we give, but on what takes place here this morning. All right? Heavenly Father, thank you for gathering us here. Thank you most importantly, Lord, not that we're here, but, the, but that you're here. Thank you, God, that you've been waiting for us. You were here before we were here. 
You'll be here when we leave. And you want to, you want to weave yourself through everything that happens here. Lord, thank you for moving in our hearts to give. Thank you for moving in our hearts to, to sing, to yell, to scream, to proclaim that you are God. Thank you, God, for moving in, in this place through your word. The way you're going to do so through Pastor Allen in a bit. The way you speak to us, the way you listen to us. Thank you, God, for being God. Amen. Amen. That way. Well, good morning. We have a lot of amazing talent at Richfield. Uh, and I don't know that I've ever done this before, but I have put all of the praise team members on the stage at the exact same time today. So we're just going to worship. We're hoping you're going to worship with us. There'll be times where just one of us are singing in our mic. But if you see words on the screen and if you hear even just one of us singing, join us. Um, sometimes we'll all be singing and other times it'll be just one or two. But the point is for all of us to worship together. It doesn't always have to be on a mic. Uh, but we want to lift him up in this place today, okay? So let's stand together and let's sing. You've come to the right place. Whether you're facing uh, is difficult or it's easy, God is wanting to be there through all of it. Everything belongs to Him. When all I see is a battle, you see my victory. Go before us, nothing. 
Church, and thankful that the battle is his in his hands. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus. Everybody has trials and temptations. Everybody knows heartbreak, isolation. But we can lay our burdens down. Lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus. East to west, my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon. And forever and ever, His heart is my Everybody has fears, everybody's got worries, everybody knows sorrow, devastation, here's the good news, but we can lay our burdens down. thankful for that. You may be seated. I think we have someone here who would like to share. I don't know if that mic's working. Aaron, can you give her yours? Can we get some lights down there for me? God is always with us. Almost two years ago, I was laying in a bed and they had called my children home and said, she's not going to make it through the night. Four times they had given the right for me to go and see Jesus. And Jesus keeps saying, there's more for you to do, darling. You do not need to come home yet. He gives us strength every day. I couldn't walk from here to there. I spent four months in a bed, in a bed. Couldn't get out to even clean myself or nothing. Um, my first shower, I cried. God is so good. You just have to be as faithful as he is. Stand with him. Believe in him. Give your heart and soul to our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Almighty. He can do anything, anything. I mean, he can bring you out of death and put your feet on the solid rock, him. Always stand with him. Let him be who you praise because your heart is full of that praise. 
He has given me that opportunity, and I want to say, I love my Jesus. I will do and go wherever he sends me. I will continue to serve him as long as I am on this earth, from my bed, from my feet, from the altar, from singing, from just being who he made me. God is my author. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He loves us. We only need to love him back. And I praise Jesus for being with me. God wants to speak. I was talking with Alan this week saying, I feel there's a testimony that needs to be a part of the service. Thank you, Darlene, for sharing that testimony. Ty is also going to share a little bit about I'd love to just speak from the cuff, but the Lord made me type A, so I wrote it down. But I still do want to praise him. Um, And I spent all of last week praising and telling a lot of you this. Some of it you know and some of it you might not know. But if you don't know me, I'm Ty. I've come up here before and done that, so hopefully you know me. Um, About three weeks ago, I was fighting a battle all by myself. Um, Not by myself, but I thought it. I was struggling with my past traumas. Um, with insecurities, with fear, suicidal thoughts, ultimately a very nagging belief that God wasn't real. Um, I never thought I'd find myself in a place like that because I've been a Christian my whole life. Um, I'm a therapist, so my brain said, that's not you. You would never, ever have a suicidal thought. I've helped so many people not be in that place. Um, Ultimately, just a big sense of pride that I was going through. Um... I had two thoughts, two assumptions, because I was a therapist, that this shouldn't be happening to me, and that since it is, I can fight this. I can fight it with research, I can fight it with books, I can fight it with meditation and positive thoughts, and maybe all of that have worked for some of you guys, and it can still work, but that wasn't what I needed. I left God out of the equation completely. I found that those things weren't cutting it, and I knew very deep inside of me that God was telling me he wanted me to let go and to give it to him. We had a prayer vigil, um, the last one we had, and I sat in the middle of two girls singing and I had to stop for a second because I just felt him saying, you haven't surrendered to me. I wanted full surrender and I told him, you'd have to help me with it. (laughs) And so I didn't realize that that would entail all my things coming out because there was stuff I didn't even know. I had no clue pridefulness was even an issue in my life until I had a great friend help me realize that. Um, I, came to sun, or I came to church one Sunday and I sat in the pew and I fought everything that was said. So many people said how wonderful worship was and I sat and I, every word the praise team sung, I was like, no, that's not true. He's not this, he's not that. Pastor preached and I did the same thing. And then I had worked and worked all week long, again, doing those things I said, and none of it was working still. And I prayed in the middle of it, but none of it was a surrendered prayer. And then I said, okay, I know you're telling me I need to come and I need to surrender. And so that next Sunday, I came to church and I did not go to Sunday school. Um, I sat at the very back of the sanctuary and I read my Bible and I prayed and I said, well, I'll surrender all and I'll just sit in here, right? And then I kept having a call to come forward, like keep coming forward. And I tricked myself in my brain to thinking that that was just me. Why would God be speaking to me? I probably just saying that to myself. But I kept coming forward and finally I was at the front row and I was like, you know, I'm here, what else? I've surrendered all and I felt a pull. My head literally felt like it needed to come down. And again, I said, that's just me. Why, where am I supposed to go? Like, I'm not gonna lay on the ground. And I had pictures of our pastors doing that in my head. Just visions of him saying, that's what I want you to do. Three times he said it, and three times I said, no, 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 I'm not, that's weird. People will think things of me. And finally I said, fine, I'll do it. And so I did. 
And even as I laid there, I felt him saying, you're holding it, you're holding it, you're holding on to all the stuff. And I felt myself give it and just surrender. And I said, I need you to take it. Placing my burdens on him. And the moment I did that, I did feel a sense of, oh, I don't have to do this anymore. I gave the battle I'd been fighting to him. And through that, God sent me, oh, sorry, mommy to message me the next day. I had 25 minutes in between a client, and she had a couple minutes in between things she was doing, and it worked out perfectly. The first thing she said to me was, I don't really know what I'm saying, and then continued, and it was exactly what I needed to hear. He sent me my life group to reach out and make sure that I was okay. He sent me other friends to support me and to listen. He sent me my husband to tell me over and over again, have you looked at the blessings in your life as much as you've looked at the negatives? And I realized that through all of the things, all of the negatives that I was focusing on, he was there. I was so focused on through seven years. My parents got divorced and my kids are a struggle and all these different things, but I didn't realize that he's given me my kids, my husband, my friends, my life group, my me, all these things he gave to me. And when I let go of the battle and the fight, he fought for me and came in a very real way. So I just want to praise him for that. God is so good, amen. You know this hymn. Uh, we encourage you to sing it with us. It's a blessed assurance. Praise 
part's a little bit different, but sing it with us. This is my story. I will testify. This is my story. I'll testify that God is good all the time. He saw me and heard my cry. Now I am his. This is my story. I'll testify. followers of Christ, we have the assurance that he will always be with us and that his strength will carry us through even the darkest of valleys. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters who's holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding? set free. There is a cross that bears the burden where a mother died for me. There is another in the fire. church and proclaim it. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. Should I
darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between words I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the present was made in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between There's been a spirit upon this place. We have been praying, folks. Jesus has been here among us, and we in our worship have been speaking to him. And I want to give you an opportunity, if you would like. Uh, The praise team will continue in the next little bit. And as they sing, if you would like to come here and take it a next step further to just lay down whatever it is, interceding for someone else or asking the Lord to intervene in your life, we would invite you to come. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I'd fall
Lord, this has just been one continuous stream of prayer. And I pray, Father, that you'd be with those who are in their seats, those who are also online, because you unite us by spirit. We are all one today. And those who have taken this step to come forward. Lord, first of all, what I think about is uh, the fact that we had this smoke not long ago from the fires. And I remember thinking that smoke would obscure things where you couldn't see very well, and yet I would know they were there. I drove up to the church, and I thought, well, I know that building is there. And Lord, today, I ask that faith would prevail across this place in the life of every person. Because sometimes, Lord, we don't quite see, but we are a people of faith, and we're called to the life of faith. And so, God, even if there's something that has not quite come to us yet that we are asking you for, even if we don't maybe have all of the exciting feelings that others may have, Lord, we know that you are there, and we live as a people of faith. And yet, Lord, we don't want to disavow anything that's been said here today because we know that the line between heaven and the spiritual and the physical is a thin one, and we really do believe that you work and that you intervene. So I pray, Father, that you would work in your way and your timing in every single person in this room and persons joining us online. I pray for healing for broken bodies. I pray, Father, for comfort and strength for grieving people. I pray, Father, for struggling people, for a greater sense of you and a rest of faith, Father, in putting their complete trust in you and that you would move us all up a notch. Just move us a little bit where you need us to be. We're glad that you are faithful. I pray, Father, today for our nation and for those who you have set over us. We pray your blessing and help and strength and guidance for them. I pray, Father, for this church and everything you're going to continue to do. And I pray for the messenger of this hour that as we frame once again and see in sharper focus what you want to do in and through us, that you would speak truth through him. You would open up our hearts and minds. We ask all of this, and I bless this entire congregation in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of God. Amen. I just want to thank everybody here in this church. Huh? Oh. oh, it's both. Yeah. I was on a um, uh, trip to Shipshawana with a bunch of la people, not just ladies, from our church. And when I got, we had a wonderful time. And when we got back, I walked in my door of my house, and my husband said, I got really bad news for you and my heart sunk and I didn't know what he was going to tell me I have a wonderful polite ambitious step grandson in my life has been in my life since he was seven eight years old and my husband said that Nicholas took a gun and shot himself in the head and praise the Lord, he's still alive. It has been a total miracle that he is alive and he has his memory and he has his eyesight and he can speak and he can walk. And there is so much hope for him getting back his life. This young man that's so depressed about a divorce, about battles with ex-wife, about not wanting him to be allowed to see his children. And I feel it just all came too much for him. 
and I want to, the first thing that came to my mind was to call somebody at the church and ask for prayer, get the prayer chain going. That was my first thought. And then I have friends that go to other churches, and I called all of them, and I said, please contact your prayer ch chain at your church and pray for Nicholas. And they did. I know there were thousands of people praying for Nicholas, and I know that's why he's here today. And he had his 30th birthday last week. And he's, he's still there. He's still inside. His personality, his thoughts, everything is still there. And I also want to be thankful that my granddaughter, who's 16, will be 17 very soon, uh, always came here to Joy's with me for when she was younger, for the Sunday school and the church. And, and the first thing she did when she heard that her big brother shot himself was to tell her parents, we've got to get on our knees, and we got to pray for Nick. And they all did. <laughs> But she was the one that instigated it. And she said, we have to pray for Nick. And I am just thankful to God today that he has given Nicholas a second chance here, here. to live his life and see his children. And I'm grateful to all of you for all your prayers, and I pray you will continue to pray for him. Thank you so much. Ma'am, why don't we uh, pray together, church? Why don't we pray together for Nicholas and for the whole family? Thank you, Father, uh, for this praying grandmother. Thank you so much for Pam, for her heart for you, and for her family. We together, Lord, in faith believing, thank you that you saved this young man's life. But we pray right now, God, that you do more than just save his physical life, that you grab hold of Nicholas, and that you help him to discover real life, real hope, real possibility in you. We bless him together with Jesus. We pray that Jesus would just come upon him and the whole family in a fresh and new and powerful and life-altering way. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God Thank bless you. you, Pam. Crystal. need a spotlight um, I wanted to test I wanted to testify for a long time but just didn't seem like the right time and then I would go down in a slump and think oh I could never testify now and uh, anyways for those who don't know I lost two of my children last year a year ago almost and it's been hard I was so angry at God, and I just would yell at him and scream and cry all the time. Wonder why this happened. Because I always felt like I was a praying mom, and I was, and I did, thought I did everything right. Of course, I wasn't perfect, but anyway, I know that my children are safe in the arms of Jesus, Tracy, and then Jeremy, and I'll see him again someday, and then in January, I'm still, well, in August, last August, I felt touched by the Lord, you know. And I had told Pastor Jan about it and how he really gave me assurance about my kids and two of mine. I have three. I got Lisa here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and uh, anyways, but then I went into this slump again, like I said, and oh my goodness, I could not testify because I'm so upset still at God and but he kept talking to me and 
whispering to me and helping me that he has a plan for all of our lives. He had a plan for me, he has a plan for each of my children and my grandchildren and it's gonna be, they're all gonna be safe, safe in the arms of Jesus. And then uh, in February, my husband Jim got real bad. He started getting Alzheimer's and but he didn't seem that bad at first. I just thought, oh, this is, you know, he knows everybody and he's just getting lost. And I thought this might go on for 10 years or whatever. We'll be okay. And, and in February, he just got really, really bad. And so ever since, he's been in and out of the hospital and in rehab and now he's, I had to put him in a nursing home and I don't like it when I come to take care of him at home in any way. But God, God's with him. God's with me. He's taking care of all of us, and I'm just so happy for all of you that have prayed for me this whole year and continue to pray for us and, and Jim. I know he's got a plan for us, and, and he's... He's so good. God is so good. I couldn't be without him. Praise the Lord for all of you. Thank you. Thank you for my pastor. Thank you for Pastor Alan, Pastor Jan, and all their, their visits and their encouragement and prayers. I'm just so thankful for them and all of you. Speak it out, Crystal. Can we pray for you? Would that be okay? Lord, thank you. Some days are really, really, really good. And then some seasons are really hard. We have a lot of questions and we have a lot of struggles. And yet through it all, you are there. I pray, Lord, now more than ever before that you would just bless Crystal with you. Fill her anew and afresh with your love, your strength, your grace, your help, your hope. Be there with Jim. Bless him today, we pray. Be with her whole family, God, and show them Jesus in a fresh new way today. We pray in the powerful, mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, sister. This speech is long overdue. I'm trying to get my composure. <laughs> That's not possible for me to play. When uh, I was born, I was born like any other kid, and uh, my parents thought I was brilliant. When I hit school, kindergarten, something was not working for me. I was falling behind. My mom took my paper from kindergarten, held it up to the mirror, and she could read it. Dyslexia was nothing back then. Nobody knew what it was. But um, there's a lot, lot, a lot of stories go along with that. I don't, not going to get into it right now. But when I hit the playground, I was, I was a super athlete. Nobody could catch me. Nobody could deal with me in the playground. Uh, I could outrun. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't catch me. And when we played football, I just could, I just hurt people all the time. Well, by the time I got, I thought, well, that's okay. I can't read and write, but at least I got my athletic ability. When I hit a teenager, that went away. I inherited a muscle disease from my, from my family. It's called myotonic congenita. It's actually, if you ever see painting goats on the inter internet, that's the same thing. And it's an electrical disease that uh, controls your whole body, speech, uh, I fall once in a while. Uh, finger ability, moving, uh, anything to do with voluntary muscles and unfortunately involuntary muscles. So we've, Teresa and I have made a few trips to the hospital, quick trips. But when I was growing up, I used to go down and try to get anointed for it and pray, and dear God, just take this away from me. 
because in JV ball, the co coaches would come up, to, come up to me and said, you better start thinking about college. You better start thinking about college. You're going to play college ball. And I, I couldn't handle it. I walked away from football, playing 50% of the time and, and still competing. I couldn't do it. But when I prayed, God, let me know, no matter what happened, this would not stop me from doing anything he wants me to do. So playing an instrument, would, I would still be able to do it. There's times I get up there, I don't know if I'm even going to get off the platform. And I'm surprised I haven't fallen and my fingers lock up and uh, I can't focus on my music. And a lot goes on. But God, he makes a way. When God makes a promise, he makes a way. And it's just... It's, it's discouraging at times. I'll be down in the basement and I'll be playing my bass and I'll just be shredding it. I'll be covering from one end to the other. And I come here and I'm locked down. And a lot of things, times I can't play. But God still makes a way. And it's as, it's as blessed as assurance that he gives us. And the strength to carry on. And the scripture says, whatever I'm weak, I'll be strong. Whatever strong, I'll be weak. And God just taken my entire life and flip it upside down and said, your strength will be canceled because your weakness will be your strength. And I haven't said much. And so if I do something and it sounds really great, you got to remember it's because of God's strength, not me, because I'm, medically speaking, I'm not capable of doing it. My prayer for a while for our church is for the Holy Spirit to just be real, to just work, to move in us and around us and among us, however he needs to move in us and around us and among us. And we're hearing real live testimonies, come on Ken, of how God is moving in our lives. If you don't know him, this is my friend Ken. He's been, how long have you been coming to Ridgefield? About uh, 14 months, 15 months. 14 months. months. 14, 15. Tell yeah. us what God's doing in your life, Ken. I just want to say thank you, introduce myself to you guys. My name's Ken Truman, if you don't know me. My wife says that I can't say hello in five seconds, so I'll try not to make it long, but suffice it to say, <clears throat> I grew up and lived where all you guys want a vacation, Petoskey, Harbor Springs, Michigan for 60 years. Knew Christ as my Savior, 16 years old, was baptized, lived for him, found my wife. Believe it or not, kids, there was no uh, web dating, there was no e-harmony when I was looking to get married. There, but there was a Christian pen pal club, and I met, <laughs> you laughing, Jerry? So <laughs> there was a Christian pen pal club, and I wrote to this gal in Millington, Michigan, and her name was Sherry Webster. And uh, one thing led to another. Been married to her for 41 years, and I love, love her to death. Um, so I took her away. I whisked her away to northern Michigan. Had a job for 32 years uh, with a little factory there. And then... I did something stupid and uh, kind of started the ball rolling. I've heard various people this morning testify about uh, troubles in their life and about depression. And uh, I made a stupid choice and uh, I joined a different company. I listened to a couple of guys that I shouldn't have listened to. And uh, long story short, we lost everything. A 
love to fish, I love to hunt. Had a nice little house on five acres with a little trout stream in the backyard. Nothing fancy, but we raised our kids there. And uh, they had graduated and uh, left the house, and it was just Sherry and I. But if you're a guy, you know what it's like to stand in front of somebody and tell them you lost everything. I didn't have anything. Lost my house. We moved into an apartment in Petoskey. I didn't have a job. My wife was working at a bakery in Lansing for $10 an hour. We were living in an apartment. Still loved Christ, and I knew he loved me. But I couldn't forgive myself. I knew I'd screwed up. It's one thing to know God forgives you. It's another thing to forgive yourself and move ahead. Ended up finding another job. Didn't pay near as much. And then I started having a lot of pain in my leg and my back. I went to a one doctor. And they just handed me Oxycontin and said, here, that'll take care of it. So I started taking Oxycontin and Vicodin, something to kill the pain, but I was still working. But between losing my house and living on the Oxycontin, I'd become a zombie when I came home. And my wife said to me, Ken, you got to get some help. You got to find out what's wrong. So I left the doctor I was going to that handed out the Oxycontin like it was candy. And I just called a different doctor's office and they said, you got an appointment with Dr. Kennedy. I didn't know Dr. I didn't know Dr. Kennedy from a man in the moon. And I showed up at the appointment, and the nurse took my vitals and everything, and a couple minutes later, I heard a knock on the door, and the doctor opened the door. <laughs> she looked at me, and I looked at her, and she said, Mr. Truman? I said, Emily? She ran to me. Give me a huge hug. It was a gal I had in youth group at my former church 20 years before that. I had no clue. She went to U of M, became a doctor. The first thing she did was pray with me. She prayed. She loved on me. Got to the bottom of my issue. I had back surgery. And then I went back to my former job, and they told me, you had back surgery. You're too much of a risk. We can't use you anymore. Had one job for 32 years, and then I had three jobs in two years. And I got mad. I got mad at the people at the place everybody calls God's country. I said, I'm getting out of Petoskey. There's too many bad memories. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm doing something. How I ended up in Davison, Michigan, I, 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 I can't answer that. I used to coach in high school, and everybody would, I, I'd go in a store. I couldn't get, pick up a gallon of milk without being gone an hour because everybody stopped me and talked to me, and I knew everybody. And I come here, and I walk around, and no one says a word to me until, until I found a church at RCN, Richfield Church of the Nazarene. I've been depressed. I've been on Xanax, I've been on Buspirone, I've been on Paxil, I've been on all of them. Please don't judge me because I love Jesus. I love him. But it's tough. I didn't know anybody. I can walk in the store and nobody knows me, nobody cares about me. They don't know my name, they don't care to know my name. But I came here Pastor Allen, Pastor Jan, 
Pastor Allen's been great. He asked me to go to lunch. Every time I need to text him, he's there for me. Dave Austell, every single Sunday, he knows my name. He loves me. Pat and Don Morey, like my parents. I don't know where he's at back there, but I love that guy. I say all that to say you guys are part of my recovery. Many of you, I don't know your names. I'm learning. I see, I think it's Brittany, the chicken lady. I just have to associate. It's, it's, it's the only, forgive me, it, but it's my way of associating people with, I don't, it's the only way I can do those types of things is I associate them. Dale Jenkins in the upward basketball, that meant a lot to me. This year I stepped aside from that. I need to get back in, but I was just down and depressed. So I struggle with that because the way I was raised was Christians don't get depressed. Believers don't get depressed. We got everything to live for. That's absolutely right. But still, life is hard sometimes. And when you're a 60 some year old guy and you don't really have any job or anything to look forward to, you lose your self esteem. You feel like a piece of garbage. But I just want you guys to know that I love you and it's important what you do, even if just coming. This church is important. It's important in society. It's important for people like me. And I just want to say thank you. You guys mean a lot to me. And if it wasn't for Richfield right now, I don't know really where I'd be because this, this is my happy place. Monday through Friday, there's not much for me. My wife goes off to work, bless her heart, works at CLC Daycare right next to the Davidson Missionary Church. Love her to death, but we're two opposites. I'm an extrovert. I talk, talk, talk. She says very little. But when she talks, she's on her knees. For me. For me. But thank you, Don and Pat. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everybody in the old-timer Sunday school class. What's our name, prime timers? Or one foot in the grave and one on a banana peel? I don't remember what it is, but... Thank you, Pastor Allen and Jan. I love you guys a lot. Thank you. <laughs> love you, Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it okay? I speak for the Absolutely. I would never normally do this. Um, if those of you who don't know me, I am married to that beautiful girl over there, Jorian. Um, that's where you'll see me most of the time is next to her, so <laughs> I'm hard to miss. But um, I don't know, God's just been working in an amazing way this morning, and everybody sharing their testimonies. It felt wrong of me not to share what's on my heart and how good he's been in my life. Um, for those of you who don't know, Jorian has struggled for a couple years now, ever since she had really big back surgery, um, it caused her to have mental issues and depression and that has been really hard on her. I didn't come into her life until about a year and a half ago, but I could see that she was really struggling and hurting and all I wanted to do was be there for her and it's been very hard to watch her go through this, but God has taught me how powerful he is and how loving he is and through this whole journey because it hasn't been easy for her and I, I didn't know what to do at times but she said there was just this grip that it had on her and she wasn't herself. I didn't know what to do in this time. So I just prayed to God and I said, God, be with her. I love her. I don't know what to do. I can tell she's hurting. I can tell she's struggling. And every single time I prayed, whatever had a grip on Jory and let go, and she came back to normal, and it's just been so hard for me because I feel like I have to protect her and I have to do this, and 
It's my responsibility when it never was. God was taking care of her this entire time. And it took me a while to realize that. And about two months ago now, when we were on our honeymoon, Jorian told me that she didn't want to take the antidepressants she was on anymore. And it's been two months, and this is the best I've ever seen her. And I can't help but thank God for that, because it's amazing. <laughs> it's been so hard for her, and I'm so happy because God was like, just be there for her, and I'll handle the rest. And he did. And any time I wasn't there, he held her in his arms and protected her. And he's, he's shown how amazing he is and what he can do and how he can work in your life. So I just thank God for that. Good job, Austin. Thank you. In case you didn't hear his name, he has a name. It's Austin. It's not just Jorian's husband. And uh, praise the Lord for what God is doing in and around and among us. And I see another young saint who wants to share I've been listening to all these this testimonies. This is rude. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've been listening to all these testimonies. And, you know, I've been going through a lot of things, too. And I'm almost ashamed after I hear all of the people's problems, you know. But a problem is a problem, no matter who it is or what kind of people we are. It comes to us all. And... Uh, Basically, most, I know now, most of my life, I, uh, I suffered depression. I was kind of a person like, if you've ever heard of it, you can be a working al alcoholic. Because nobody, you know, nobody knows, just you know. And uh, I, faced some, I faced some very painful things during my life from, from early, early on. And then when uh, I lost my husband, I didn't know what happened. I mean, I, my whole life flipped over. And you know, my whole life, I was very young when I got married. So my whole life, I never lived alone. And now, after I lived with my husband for 65 years, and he's gone. And you know what? I thought, what am I ever going to do? What am I going to do? Because my husband was one that he liked to do everything for me. He did all the paperwork, he did all the driving, and he did a lot of things. And he was good to me, but, you know, the thing of it was, when he passed, it was more than I could handle. Because there I was. I hadn't driven in the winter. I hadn't driven much at all. I hadn't done any of the bills and taken care of anything because my husband was always going to take care of me. He loved me, wanted to take care of me. Well, it put a, it done something to me. And I didn't know what it was. You know, I'm old, older, and I do forget naturally. But I've gone through this period of months and months trying to find out what is wrong with me. Why can't I get better? People can tell me something, and I hear it, and I can repeat it now. But if you ask me 15 minutes from now, I won't be able to. Well, I had some tests. I had a grueling six-hour test to find out what is going on in my mind. And I'm thankful to say it could have been much worse. They said that I have, um, uh, see, cognitive. cognitive, yes. I have mild cognitive problems. and. I'm thankful that it's mild. But you know, this past week,
the Lord has blessed me so much more. He's kind of helping me come out of this cycle of darkness, constant darkness, crying and crying all the time. And then I'm thinking, people say, well, what is wrong with this lady? You know, he's been gone about a year and a half and that. But it, it's, it's not only that, I'm trying to find out who I am. I'm just telling you the truth. I got to know who I am. And I'm finding it out. And I'm putting more and more of my faith and trust in the Lord. I pray more. I, you know, I have, I bought three other religious books to read, but I can't find time to read them. <laughs> because I like lots of devotionals. And I have this devotional and this one and this one. And by the time I get all of them done, and I have, I will confess one thing. I get the, the uh, prayer request, you know, this big sheet of prayer requests. And I thought that I need to pray for every one of them because they ask us to pray, so we need to pray. And I was doing that constantly. But all of a sudden I realized I'm getting more drug, I'm drugged out, I'm getting depressed. So I know that I can pray for some today and I can pray for some tomorrow and the next day, and God doesn't look down on me for that. I, uh, I'm coming out of another thing. Nobody probably knows that either, but I always felt like I had low self-esteem. Esteem. I didn't quite me measure up. But I know one thing. I'm a child of God, and he chose me, and he's with me, and I am somebody in Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness. You know, we've had, we've heard from men and women. We've heard from young and less young. We've heard from uh, the very first person I had the opportunity to anoint up here this morning. Is someone who uh, looks like he's going to come and share too. Uh, who's dealing with physical issues that are pretty serious. If you don't know him yet, this is Glenn. Everybody say hi, Glenn. Good morning, church. You know, all I, all I can really say, and I'm going to say it with a big smile, is I'm a walk and talk and miracle. And uh, I, I, I can't elaborate too much, but from childhood to watching a brother was hit by a car and suffered for many years, to a young adult who got into law enforcement and was assaulted and uh, nearly killed several times and in car crashes that almost died and to having um, a spleen removed that was supposed to have cancer. And I was a walking, talking miracle with that one. I shouldn't have lived it, and I did. God saved me. Um, and I've expressed that miracle to hundreds of people. And in through all of that, I always had a smile through it, and I've always tried to make the doctors and nurses laugh because I want them all to know that Jesus is with me through this entire walk. Whether, whether God performs another miracle with me in this cancer that I have, or whether he doesn't, God's got me. He's got me in his arms completely. And I'm a firm believer in that, and I'm gonna have a smile on my, my, my face the whole way during this. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. That uh, I thank you for your prayers, I hope for more. <laughs> But uh, thank you. My name is Doris. Some of you know me and some of you don't. Uh, Tom and I have been married 15 years. We were both widowed. And the last two years has been uh, through the fire, through uh, every kind of illness as you can expect, uh, falls, strokes, cancer, uh, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, whatever. But you know, I love the song that says, in the fire, he stood by me, he still stands by me, 
And through it all, I've learned to trust him. I praise him for all he's done. Uh, Tom's in rehab right now, but he's coming home Wednesday, so uh, he's doing a lot better. But you, I'm 84 and he's 94, and you never know what you're going to expect the next day. So, uh, so I just want to praise him for all that he does and how many times he's answered prayer for us. Thank you. Amen. God bless you, Doris. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ooh, I need that microphone, Howard. This is Chris. He's married to Brittany, the chicken lady. <laughs> So some of you, some of you know me, some of you don't. But like he said, I'm married to the chicken lady. But um, <laughs> and the chicken man. All right. <laughs> Very uncomfortable being up here, but I just want to praise God for what He has done in my life, in my children's life, in our friends' life. Um, I've stood up here and gave my testimony before, but I dealt with depression, suicidal thoughts. I've been to the doctors, I took the pills, I've been to the natural paths, I did everything. I was raised in a legalistic religion and I did not know Jesus in a relationship kind of way. So after all that, I came here after I had no other way. And he showed me what it meant to have a family. He changed our marriage. I was addicted to pornography when I was a teenager, partying, drinking, smoking, all of it. When we started coming here, Tim and Stacy Pearson started mentoring us on our marriage. I remember praying for friends and for a family. We can't We can't really see what God does sometimes in the foreground, but after it happens, we can. He gave us a family. He gave us friends. He gave us Richfield. And it's not, it's not about all of this, but he shows us that he, he never leaves us. It's all from him. He did it. These are just blessings from him. He gave us friends from Ukraine. He gave us friends from J Japan. <laughs> and all the other ones that we started our life groups with on our Wednesday night class. And standing back now, I had a mother-in-law who always showed me who Jesus was. <laughs> I seen her go through the struggles and hold on to her joy through it. Jesus has worked through her and everybody. And there's so many out there that I could just stand up here and talk about Mike and Ellen Neiman. Like I said, the Pearsons and others, but I don't want to hold up the rest of the time, but I just want to praise him for what he has done. Ellen's thinking, oh no, I'm going to get in trouble. He does this, but I, through the past five years, I have always lived out everything that I've had to say programmed, whether it be through something I say through announcements or a sermon or teaching, and I've never actually just lived it out personally with you. And, um, and when I came back to Richfield, well, the reason I came back was because I did not want just another program. I didn't need another good sermon. I had heard a lot of them. I preached a couple of them. <laughs> I just didn't, I didn't want another program. I came back because this felt like home. And everything that hurt, every, all of the, the struggles, all of the difficulties, just a lot of, a lot of junk. It's not fun to go through. And I know for you, it's not fun to go through. But I, I, I vowed that something good would come out of it. 
And Alan and I would meet weekly, and he spoke to me far better in his office than he did through his sermons. And weekly, he would tell me, something good is going to come out of this, something good will come out of this. And, and as I saw it, not another program, but just relationship, folks, this is what I needed. I needed Holy Spirit movement just as friends here. Sermons are great. Programmed worship services are great, but what we have here is community, and I needed community. And I know your stuff hurts just as bad as mine, but do you see the good that comes out of your hurt? I needed to hear your testimony this morning. I've been sitting in the back for a half an hour just praising God for my junk, for my garbage that I went through because I have a testimony to, to share. And you know what? I'm celebrating and thankful for your garbage and your junk that you shared this morning because you have a testimony to share. And I grow from your junk, from your testimony. I hope that if you haven't shared this morning, you have a testimony and somebody needs to hear it. You have things that you've been through that hasn't been shared. And at some point, it might be for someone else's benefit for you to share it. For those of you that have shared this morning, thank you. I needed your junk because yours is just as bad as mine. And that feels pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> We've got one more. And then we're going to wrap things up here this morning. God's not done but he's going to be done for the moment because he's telling me it's time to be done. Um, and, uh, but we need to hear from you. My name is Sharon Metcalf, and I used to come here many, many years ago. I'm talking many years ago when my kids were young. And then I've, the song goes, I'm a wanderer. I was a wanderer, let's put it that way. When I was 18 years old, my husband was stationed in, in uh, El Paso, Texas, and my youngest was, eight, my oldest, my new, he was eight months old, and God bothered me for a long time while I was doing the laundry and um, to go to church. Well, there was a church behind us, and um, so I got the, I'll make it, try to make it short. The gal in front of us, um, I asked her if she would watch my son while I went to church, and uh, she did. I went there, and the church doors were locked. I got very angry at God because um, why would you bug me all day long, I mean all day long, to come to church and then the doors are locked and I can't get in. I didn't know what I was there for, I was 18. <laughs> and so I started to walk away and I seen a side door and um, I went to open that door and it was locked. So I said, well, you know what, Lord, this is ridiculous. I've got laundry to do. I've got a child. Somebody's watching, and I need to go. And I started to walk away, and the door opened. And this man came out and said, can I help you? And I said, are you the pastor of the church? And he said, no. I said, then you can't help me. <laughs> and he said, well, if you'll just come in. He said, I'm the music teacher. And he says, and I think I can help you. He said, um, if you'll kneel at that end of the altar, I will be at this end of the altar. And he says, and I'll pray for you. Well, let me tell you, um, the warmest hands while he was praying touched my head. <laughs> I got so fearful, I thought it was him. And I raised my head and he's still kneeling. And I found myself begging God to please touch me again. I've, I accepted Christ at my, in front of my home, in front of the TV when I was 10 years old with Billy Graham, and I couldn't get close enough. My, my face was like this to the TV. And um, so I know that God works, and um, did I fall away? Yes, I did. I was a teenager, and, um, but I fell away, but I came back. I kept coming back and coming back, and God kept working and working. Well. My son got shot in the head. My youngest got shot in the head uh, 24 years ago. He's a quadriplegia. He's in a nursing home. And um, he knows me. It takes him a while to talk. And um, I'm finding that uh, since my husband passed away, I'm finding that going and reading to my son from David Jeremiah, um, it's a... Uh, 
My son has become a blessing to me rather than a burden, which he never really was a burden. It's just that I never knew how to handle things. But God has made me so strong. In 2020, in January of 2020, I laid down my life to God from the time I was three years old till I was at that time 77. And I'm not ashamed to say it because I praise God for every day I got. I was doing my devotions and he talked to me so loudly and I gave everything to him. And I'm telling you that if you have never, ever laid your whole life down, good, bad, ugly, it doesn't matter what it is. If you haven't done that, you've, you just don't know a peace that God can give you. He gave me a peace that passed all understanding that I can't even begin to tell you the peace that I feel inside. You know, it's just... And he has made me so strong. And when my husband passed, it was like when he was, he was so bad for five years. And I, let me tell you, the strength that I had, I, don't, I never knew where it came from. Well, I did know, but I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? But God was right there. And everybody says I'm a strong woman. Well, I don't feel strong, but yet there's times that you do. And as Ruth said, you know, she had to find out who she was. Well, I was who my husband wanted me to be for 55 and a half years. And um, I don't regret that at all. We had our, our good times, bad times, happy times, mostly happy. But I, I found, I'm finding myself. I am finally finding out that I'm Sharon Metcalf, and I am a child of God. He is my Savior. He is my saving grace. And until you come to that point, in your life, you can think all you want that you're happy and, and go on with your life and everything else, but until you've actually laid everything right down to God, I'm telling you, you're not as happy as what you think you are. And I just want to tell you that um, I came back to church. I sat out in a pew, and Debbie, I don't know if her name is Martin in 302, Debbie Martin, she's my Sunday school teacher. And, you know, when a little girl, I loved Sunday school. As I got older, I didn't like Sunday school. I really did not. But let me tell you, I got into Debbie's class. And I tell you, she's the most amazing teacher. And we're doing David Jeremiah, and, and it, sometimes I feel like she's David Jeremiah standing up there because that's just how she teaches. And, and for the first time, in all my years of life, I actually love coming to Sunday school. I look forward to coming to Sunday school. And, uh, and it's because God works through her. So don't sit back and say, well, God didn't do anything for me. I'm telling you, God has done everything, and I'm so thankful for everything God has given me. He's given me life. He's given me strength. He's given me everything that I've ever needed. He's given me. And even things that I didn't think I needed, he's given it to me anyways. He's all, he will always make a way for you. He's made a way for me. And, and I thought I was an impossibility, but <laughs> I guess I'm not. So I just, I just came back to the, when I came back here, my whole Sunday school class has made me feel very welcomed. And I don't know a lot of people and, um, here except for what's in Sunday school. But every one of them have been such a blessing to me. And, um, and I want to thank God for that and thank God for the church. And thank you. God bless you, Sharon. Everybody stand with me. Sing with me. God is so good. God is so good. God. All God's children got problems, but God is good. Take that with you this morning. Pray with me. God, you really are good, and that is our affirmation today together. Thank you for the stories that we're hearing about how good you are in the middle of challenging circumstances. I pray your continuing blessing over every one of us as we go from this place. In the powerful, mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, amen. God bless you. Have a great week.